Starlink satellite internet has been a complete game changer for digital nomads, remote workers, and even businesses who can now get virtually global coverage with high speed, low latency internet, and unlimited data. But Starlink is not perfect. No single internet source is. With Starlink specifically, since it's satellite internet, you do need a clear view of the sky. Otherwise you can get outages and interruptions due to obstructions like trees. Weather can also impact Starlink since it's satellite internet. So heavy rain, heavy snow can actually cause interruptions. For the average home internet user that's using Starlink, that's not too big of a deal. You can deal with some buffering while you're watching your favorite TV show. But for others like digital nomads, work from home employees, or businesses that are using Starlink as the primary internet connection, those outages, however infrequent they may be, are just simply not acceptable. And no one internet source is gonna be 100% reliable. So if that sounds like your situation, you're a power user and you need the utmost reliability possible out of your Starlink connection, then this video is for you. I'm gonna be talking about how to back up your Starlink connection with cellular. Adding cellular as a backup to your Starlink connection can you give you failover protection, meaning that if Starlink has an outage, whether it's due to obstructions or a network outage or some other issue, it'll automatically fail over back to your cellular connection, giving you a seamless, uninterrupted connection. When the Starlink connection is restored, you automatically go back to your primary Starlink connection so that you can take advantage of the higher speeds, lower latency, and unlimited data of all the Starlink service plans. Sounds great, right? Must be super complicated though. This device right here, the Peplink B1 5G, this is a wireless router that allows you to do all those things I mentioned with just this one piece of hardware. So it's not complicated at all. And in this video, I'm gonna be explaining how I use this to back up my Starlink connection with 5G cellular. I'm gonna be showing you the configuration that I have for this device right here, how to hook it up with Starlink, and how easy it is to use. The Peplink B1 5G is $599. And I know that sounds like a lot, but like I said, if you're one of those power users, if you're relying on Starlink to generate income for yourself, then this is a small price to pay for having more reliable internet. I'll leave a link in the description below for the Amazon page for this Peplink B1 5G if you're interested in purchasing it or learning more information about it. This will basically replace your Starlink router. So you put the Starlink router in bypass mode, you'll hook this up and configure it, and this will be your primary router controlling your home network. Just like most Wi-Fi routers, you have Ethernet LAN ports, you have Wi-Fi antennas here on the front, but unlike most other Wi-Fi routers, you also have cellular antennas here on the back, multiple WAN ports on the back, meaning you can use multiple different internet sources, but also like I'd mentioned earlier in the video, integrated cellular modem. And that's where you see these two SIM card slots right up here up front. The cool thing about this is that it also supports eSIM, so you don't need a physical SIM card at all. And actually what I would recommend is going with Peplink's own eSIM data plans. So they offer their own data plans that you can use and it's basically like pay-as-you-go data. So with most other carriers, you buy a SIM card and a data plan you pay per month, like $20 a month or whatever for, for access. You get a certain amount of data with that. With Peplink's plans, however, you get an eSIM, it's loaded automatically right onto your unit and you pay as you go. So you buy $79, gives you 20 gigabytes of data up front, and you can use that as backup failover data. And then whenever you exhaust that, maybe it's a few months down the line, maybe even like a year down the line, if you don't have very many outages, you can just refill that at that point. So you don't have this reoccurring charge. And I think the best part about the Peplink eSIM data plans is that it includes access to their Speed Fusion Connect technology, but also it utilizes multiple carriers. So if you're not sure which cellular carrier has the best signal at your home or wherever you're gonna be using this setup, Speed Fusion Connect allows you to use basically any of the carriers that are available at your location and it automatically selects the best one. So if you've got this Peplink router, you've got a SIM card or maybe Peplink's eSIM, you also need an ethernet cable to connect between the Peplink and your Starlink router. The Peplink router doesn't come with one, but besides that, that's really all you need. I'm assuming that you already have a successfully installed and working Starlink kit with a Starlink service plan, and that's your primary internet connection. So now let's jump into how to set it up. So to actually set up the Peplink router, it's pretty simple. You just need to connect all the included antennas, just attach the Wi-Fi antennas and the cellular antennas as well. Peplink comes with this power adapter, so go ahead and plug that in to the wall on one side, and then the other side will plug into the back here 
just like that. Take your ethernet cable. By the way, this is not supplied with the Pepling router, so you'll need your own. Connect it to one of the ethernet LAN ports. Take the other end and you'll wanna go into the WAN one port of the Pepling B15G. And that's all there is to it as far as the connection goes. What this does is allow the Peplink router to get internet access from the Starlink unit. And what you can do to disable this is put the Starlink Gen 3 router into bypass mode. That will allow the Peplink router to take over completely. Once you have the Peplink router powered on and the internet connection established here from Starlink, you'll see these two green status lights. And now we're ready to do the basic configuration on the Peplink web interface page. So let's do that. Okay, so once your Peplink router is powered on and you've connected to the Wi-Fi network, go ahead and navigate to the web interface page, the, ad the administration control panel, and you do that by typing in the IP address 192.168.50.1. And you can go ahead and ignore any of the security warnings that may pop up. The default username and password is admin admin. So go ahead and use that to log in. You'll have to set up a new password. So go ahead and do that. And hit save changes and apply. And it's gonna ask you to set a new password for your Wi-Fi network. I'll just leave the name as is and go ahead and set up a new password for my Wi-Fi network. and hit save and apply. So go ahead and give the router a minute or two to reboot with that new Wi-Fi name and password and then you'll have to reconnect to it to be able to get back to this admin page. And once you're connected and you'll see this, you'll get back onto your dashboard here and now we're in. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do I'm just using Starlink as my WAN1 here, and cellular is going to be my backup option. I'm not gonna be using the second WAN port, so I'm gonna go ahead and disable that by dragging it down into the disabled column. And as it's set up by default right now, the way this is working is Starlink is connected as WAN1, it's my highest priority connection, and then cellular is on standby as priority number two, so my backup option. Now this, this basic configuration will work fine for a backup cell cellular connection, but there is gonna be a, a few seconds there of delay if it ever does have to fail over to the priority two. So I'm gonna show you how to turn on something called WAN smoothing using Peplink's speed fusing technology. And the way you do that is go ahead and drag the cellular back up into priority number one with your Starlink connection. And you can see now it changes from standby to connected. You can think of this WAN connection status as basically the interface on or off. So this doesn't mean that we're using cellular data right now. It just means that we have an active connection established. And this is key to getting the hot failover, meaning the seamless transition from Starlink to cellular if you ever need to in case of a, of a Starlink outage. So this is step number one. Step number two, once you have these at the same priority and you've disabled all of your other connections here, go ahead and click into WAN1, which is Starlink. We're gonna make a couple changes here. We're gonna go down, all this is fine. We're gonna go down to health check method. Now Starlink, I've read, does not really like this DNS lookup method of the health check. So we're gonna change it to ping. And on host one and host two, we're just gonna use 8.8.8.8 and 9.9.9.9. We can leave everything else the same. This is a better health check method for Starlink specifically, so that's why I'm making these changes here. So everything else can remain the same. Just go ahead and hit save and apply. Okay, everything else can remain the same here. Now I want you to go to the SF Connect tab up here, the Speed Fusion Connect. So we are gonna set up the SFC Speed Fusion Connect for outbound access. And the way you do that, you go in here and select automatic. This will select the automatic Speed Fusion endpoints that are best for your location. 
and then click the green check mark. Okay, so now you're good. What we also have to do is, now that we have this policy in place, go ahead and click on it. And we've got a default tunnel here, default number one. We can leave this alone. We're not gonna be using this. What we wanna do for specifically for hot failover for Starlink and cellular backup, create a new tunnel here. And we're gonna just name it WAN smoothing. And we're gonna make some setting changes here. We're gonna turn on WAN smoothing to normal. We're gonna leave this policy at dynamic weighted bonding. And the main thing that we're gonna do here so that we can have Starlink as our primary and cellular as our backup, we're going to change everything to priority two, click copy to copy it hold to the other ones, and then go back and change our WAN one, which was our Starlink to our highest priority as number one. So you can see what I did there is just, it just changed everything else to priority two, which includes our cellular, and then Starlink is our priority one. What this policy will do is use Starlink all the time, as long as it's up, whenever we have an event and Speed Fusion detects that Starlink is down, it will switch over to cellular, which is on priority number two. And that'll be a hot failover using this, uh, using this Speed Fusion dynamic weighted bonding. So this is our policy that, that allows us to do that. And that's why we had to have both connections on our dashboard, Starlink and cellular, as active. So we save this policy here. Okay, once we have our, our bonding policy in place, let's go to advanced and then outbound policy. Because right now, that policy is not in effect because we haven't applied it. But we can add a rule here. And we'll just name this Starlink, Starlink SFC for Speed Fusion Connect. We're going to leave it enabled. Uh, we're going to have any source and any destination here. And for our algorithm, we're going to do priority based. So this is our, these are our SFC policies that are not in use. This is the one we just created when smoothing. We're going to drag this over into the highest priority spot. So basically what this means is this new outbound rule says that we need to be using this SFC policy, this WAN smoothing technology on our connection. So we're gonna hit save, everything else can remain the same. And now we've got this policy in place and we can click apply changes. Okay, so now, the, now everything's in place for our hot failover. So just to give you a little bit more information, so this is a basic hot failover configuration. If you go in back into your outbound rule, you can do a lot more than just, you know, all source traffic, all destination traffic. You can even say, okay, I only want the WAN smoothing to be active for audio and video clients. Uh, maybe you only want it for uh, your desktop PCs maybe for only for VOIP services. Speed Fusion Connect and this Peplink router allows you to do some amazing configuration, very detailed. I'm just gonna leave it as is though. So there's a lot of configuration options here. If you need to filter down to specific devices or specific applications, like only video calling platforms, for example, you can do that in here and only in allow WAN smoothing for those connections. But for just this tutorial here, I'm just gonna leave it as is so that we have a basic WAN smoothing hot failover process. And this is what it looks like on the dashboard. What has changed here that now that we have enabled this WAN smoothing is that now we have an established connection to our Speed Fusion Connect. You can see that here. It also gives you your data allowance and then how much is left on your cellular data if you have one of the PepLink eSIMs. Now, an important note here is that you can see we have SFC data and our cellular data. It's important to note that things like WAN smoothing and bonding, if you're not actually using data from this cellular connection, this goes against your Speed Fusion Connect allowance, which is obviously a lot higher. So in other words, WAN smoothing, if it detects that Starlink is the best connection to use, you're not gonna get charged for cellular data, even though some of the data that it's sending 
to be able to do the WAN smoothing is redundant. So that's all there is to it. Uh, we, ha we now have a setup that will do a hot failover from cellular if our Starlink connection goes down. And this will enable anything that's connected to this Peplink router to be seamlessly connected, upload, download, doesn't matter. Things will just switch right over to cellular. Pretty cool technology here, right? This B15G from Peplink is, is amazing. Um, I think it's gonna be a great solution for a lot of you power users that really need the utmost reliability from your Starlink internet connection. Adding 5G or other cellular as backup is a great option because cellular data, usually those plans are data capped, not unlimited like Starlink. So they provide good speeds, but they're not the best as a primary internet connection. So using them as a backup gives you kind of that smoothing over effect where if your Starlink has an outage, whether it's due to like obstructions or weather or whatever, you can use cellular to smooth those over, smooth those transitions and maintain your internet connection so that you can continue to work and operate your business without any issues. Now, I really just scratched the surface for what is possible with this unit. This has so many more configuration options, even beyond just basic failover. I already touched a little bit on the WAN smoothing, where you're sending basically redundant data packets over multiple internet options, and then Speed Fusion Connect picks the best one and just ensures the best uh, connection, lowest latency, highest performance, that sort of thing. That's just you know the tip of the iceberg for what's possible with this thing. You can set up uh, port forwarding, guest networks, mesh there's so many options with this and it's it's honestly kind of overwhelming i don't have time to cover everything in one video but i do want to share some resources with you if you're interested in learning more about some of those more advanced configuration options i will link uh, some articles and videos in the description below so those will be tutorials and guides from peplink and other youtube channels that show more in-depth configuration options and other types of features that you can use with this if you're interested in more of those advanced configuration options. If you have any other suggestions about what you'd like to see, specifically with this B15G, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to chat with you about it. As always, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video.